It's the end of summer, 1976. An Argentinian guy named Alfredo Fiorito, who used to work as a promoter and journalist, is traveling from Argentina to Europe, fleeing the military dictatorship of his native Argentina. After visiting Europe, now he's staying in Barcelona. He heard about a free island where the police would never have bothered him. They also had friends there. Sounds like the perfect place to be to Alfredo. So we decided to take a boat and discover the white island named Ibiza. <music> Ibiza club scene comes to life through hippie gatherings held during the 1960s and 1970s. During this, people of various nationalities sharing the hippie attitude would organize free open air parties, letting themselves express their identity. I firmly believe that if there is one word to describe Ibiza, it's freedom. That sense of freedom inspired a handful of open-minded DJs who, at the end of the 70s and beginning of the 80s, used Ibiza's atmosphere to experiment and bring new vibrations by taking the dance floor on a new spiritual journey. Two out of all, Giuseppe Nunzo, artistically DJ Pippi, and Nosa Padilla. Riccardo moved to Ibiza from Germany in the early 80s. He took all of his records with him and in 1984, Pasha's founder, Ricardo Urgian, invited him to become one of their first resident DJs. Jose moved to Ibiza in 1975. He loved Ibiza dance for its tolerance for strange music. After his first gig at Café del Mar, famous for its beautiful sunset view, London-based label React started releasing his CD compilations, becoming the good father of chill-out music. Alfredo took his first steps on the island in 1982. He began DJing while looking after a friend's bar, spinning favorites like Pink Floyd. His primary influence was Jean-Claude Maury, a DJ from Brussels who played a Q and Glory. In 1984, he finally got the residency at Amnesia, but the season was a disaster. There was nobody in the middle of the summer. Privilege and Pacha were the trendy places to be, but it all changed late one August evening as they were closing. Some work colleagues, particularly her girlfriend, asked him, Alfredo, why don't you play instead of being here waiting to be paid? Alfredo started to play music loud, and the people coming down from queue listened to that music from the road. The next day, 50 people, then 300, and four days later, there was thousands of people in the club. Amnesia became a pizza's first major after-hours club. People fell in love with Alfredo's style. He used to play jazz, reggae, disco, soul, rock and roll, Italian and Spanish songs as well. He never got the idea that was the beginning of the Balearic sound. In all this, Danny Rampling, Paul Oakenfold, Johnny Walker and Nicky Holloway, four young exponents of the British club culture, heard about Amnesia and Alfredo and they took a holiday in Ibiza. Danny would read about Amnesia, so he was already familiar with it when he got there. But Trevor Funk, the first responsible for inviting them to the island, was the man who introduced them to After Hours Ibiza. Then he spent the night in Amnesia, and everything was incredible. Alfredo's music was a revelation in terms of the way music was played. He never experienced anything like that. Thanks to this life-changing experience, Danny launched Shum in the autumn of 1987, which became the UK's first club night dedicated to the Balearic sound, developed by DJ Alfredo at Amnesia. Alfredo, DJ Pippi, Jose Padilla and Leo Mas all were guided by an attitude to music, more than a specific style. 
But what is Balearic music? In my mind, it's the waves. Balearic, like the waves, is in constant flux, if you think about it. Spiritual, restless, tribal, disco. I believe it can be anything you want it to be, as long as it's Balearic. And perhaps it was the same for Alfredo and his unique way of putting records together. <laughs> 